you know, this very compelling example of someone who's like super identified with um, the world would be better out, off without me. I mean, it's, it's um, in a certain way, and I, it's not like I would necessarily say this to a client, but the thing that sort of gives away that the simplicity of that, you know, identity um, is not so simple is that they're alive and that they're in front of you, right? I mean, if they were m merely, you know, if, if like the world would be better off without me were exhaustive of who they were, they wouldn't be sitting in front of you. So there's something more um, that is going on there, um, more to them than, you know, simply you know, someone who, you know, shouldn't exist. You know, what is that something? And, and you know, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm curious what, you know, other aspects of that person are sort of holding them, uh, holding them in this world. You know, I've said that, um, that sort of identity is the world would be better off without me is functional in the sense that in a world where you feel sort of at a loss to be able to be effective or useful or valuable in the world, like to know for certain that the world would be better off without you at least tells you what to do and what to not do. So it's functional in that regard. It's instructive, you know, like don't try anything because anything you try won't work. Don't connect with people because anyone you connect with will take damage. So it, it, it has a very uh, clarifying effect for the person who has it. It's also functional uh, for the therapist because, you know, when a therapist is sitting in front of that kind of really hard identification, it takes the therapist's attention and sort of zooms it in you know, on this kind of hard, you know, bit of living that the uh, client has presented. And as the therapist is in, you know, super focused on this particular thing that they've put in there that's, you know, almost impossible to ignore, you know, there's the whole universe of what else is, you know, sitting there in that room um, that, uh, becomes obscure. And I would even say, even um, for the client, um, you know, what might this therapist speak of, ask about, wonder about, that might be um, scarier than this nice, simple category with its nice, simple instructional set. See, it sort of gives a nice, simple instructional set to the therapist also. Solve this one, you know, and, you know, um, you know, it's a Sisyphean, you know, sort of a task. Also for the therapist, right? So this, this process turns back on them. And so, you know, what happens to the expanse of the therapist's experience and sensitivities and ability to sort of wander around the edges of this person's life and in different domains when their attention is sort of laser focused. So who is the therapist? Who does, the, what self does the therapist get to express in there? And, you know, you can just see the exchange sort of narrow down into that little track. Now, it doesn't really matter what the content is <laughs> that a person, you know, just, you know, becomes incredibly attached to and that starts to sort of organize like who you get to be and what you get to do and what you don't get to do. So you can take sort of the really, you know, seemingly um, formally sort of polar opposite of I know exactly who I am to, um, you know, somebody who comes in and presents something like, you know, I don't even know who I am. You know, I, uh, you know, I, I go through the motions out there in the world, but, you know, I didn't, I don't even know who I am. Now, 
that can become an identity, <laughs> right? That I don't know who I am. And, you know, just like, you know, other sort of attachments to identity, it, it kind of comes with an instruction set. So like, if you don't even know who you are, um, you know, should you, you know, meddle in this over here? Well, you don't know, right? Would that be important? You don't know, right? And uncertainty is um, scary business, right? I mean, it, you know, the Savannah taught us, um, uh, especially under um, perilous conditions, to be uh, cautious about um, uncertainty. So, you know, uncertainty under really optimal conditions will you know, produce something that looks like curiosity, but uncertainty under sort of dangerous conditions, um, you know, will produce a sort of cautiousness with respect uh, to uncertainty. So there's an instruction in there which says, you know, hold back until you're certain. I mean, if you asked a room full of people, hold up your hand if you'd like to not know who you are, you know, I mean, you know, you're, you're not going to get a lot of hands up, you know, like really not have any idea who you are. That means also that you don't know what you really actually care about. Again, though, if that category were literally true, um, you wouldn't care that you don't care about anything. If you really didn't care about anything or really didn't know that you cared about anything, you wouldn't care that you didn't care about anything. Right, so there's there's more to that, you know. I don't know, uh, I don't even know who I am, uh, than just that, and to just um, and again, you want to go gently because the harder, the tighter the grip that the person has on that sense of identity, the more you can just sort of assume uh, is. Uh, two things. One, the greater the threat. So the greater the threat, threat to sort of loosing uh, from that. But I would say also the greater the value. Like there's something, you know, longed for in there. Um, and both of those might be obscured uh, uh, by this. You know, I get somebody who says, you know, I don't even know who I am. You know, I want them to sort of take me into how that is expressed in their life. So, you know, can you tell me a time when you really, you know, you feel that in a profound way? You know, um, or maybe it feels different depending on where it shows up. So like, What's it like when it shows up in the middle of the night when you wake up and everyone's asleep? You don't even know who you are. You know, and, and I want to, you know, ask him to help me sort of see, you know, like, like, help me see the room you're in. Help me see the, you know, the position that you're holding. Um, you know, the quality of your uh, thoughts, is it like racing, is it repetitive? You know, and I don't want to, as like a kind of a fact sheet, I want to ask this as, um, you know, what we would talk in technical terms is sort of self as process kinds of things. You know, you know let's, let's imagine we could see that guy laying in bed feeling like he doesn't even know who he is. You know, like, look into his eyes, you know. Can you see, like, you know, what emotion, uh, what emotion is there? Even if you see, you know, I mean, you might see something like sadness or, or fear. You might see something like nothing. And then I might ask you, well, how is it to look into that face and see nothing? trying to picture that face. You know, and if that face could 
you know, look up at you out of those eyes and, you know, want something from you? What, what is it that they would want? You know, so I'm asking the person kind of moment by moment questions. Felt self, thinking self, you know, remembered self. You know, was there a time in your past when you had a sense of who you were? Or uh, was it a sense of who you were supposed to be? You know, when did that change? So we're looking for those kinds of transitions. All of those kinds of things like, you know, like, like if you had a sense before, but then later, um, did it erode? Did some circumstance happen that sort of broke that? Or maybe you always carried this kind of a lingering sense that, um, you know, it was like a puppet show or something uh, in your life. And, um, you know, if, uh, and, and if you can sort of identify that kind of felt sense in your history, we're doing that bit of like kind of temporal perspective taking you know, sort of younger versions of you are in that work. Um, it doesn't really matter what the answers are to those things. It's the looking that matters. You know, so even if it's like blank, it, you know, we're going to fall back to self as process kinds of questions about, you know, and, and how is that? Uh, and I feel nothing. And if you could feel something, have you seen other people in your life feel things? And um, have you ever wanted to be one? Because see, in that objection, that like, uh, I don't even know who I am, is also this kind of longing, like I wish I knew. Do you know people in your life, you know, who know who they are? You know, help me see one. You know, are there some that you like, admire that you've thought like, oh, I wish I could be like that. And then help me see that person in your life, right? All of these things are perspective taking kinds of things. And all of them, I'm going to ask these kinds of, both these kind of temporal sort of perspective taking questions, but also these kind of selfless process questions. Does it, do you remember things? Do you feel things? I'm going to look for transitions uh, over time, kind of roll back and forth through those. Um, in the therapeutic work, it's worth kind of taking a step back and noticing uh, this person who doesn't even know who they are and how curious I am uh, uh, about um, who they've been, who they are as someone who doesn't know who they are. Um, it, it, uh, it, it's, a uh, you know, like judo, you know, where you take the other person's motion, you know, and, and, uh, you use the sort of power of that, um, in the service of it. I mean, who they are also is somebody who longs to know who, you know, who they are.